Now this stuff's not really that difficult to drive through, but it does require constant concentration. I don't have a winch. I don't have anybody else out here except for myself. So I'm I have to be self-dependent. This does have lockers, but I did get stuck with lockers earlier. So just because you have lockers doesn't mean you're gonna get out of everything. So every little turn, your speed, all these things matter to take into calculation when you're driving on these roads because we don't want to end up stranded. I've definitely found that I didn't want to keep it in four low because I was just going to eat up all of the icy kind of slurpy consistency that we have going for us here with this snow. There's been a little bit of a snow, a little bit of a melt. Even with the 315s, I want to keep it in high gear to feather my touch on these areas and I don't want to have too much torque. So I don't want to be spinning my wheels too much. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are out here in Idaho next to Kokolala Lake and or Sandpoint area, and we are looking for some wolves. So I've happened upon a little wolf track or at least a game track. These could be dogs, but I highly doubt it. So I'll show you here. It's pretty clear to me that these are wolves that could be coyote, but a lot of these are relatively large. And I do see some signs of elk bulls with some urine on the trees. So as I understand it, there is a $2,000 reward for tagging a wolf out here. We have a large wolf population out here in Idaho. But right now, it's about 4 o'clock, and we're out here in the middle of nowhere. And I need to get my tent set up, get a fire going, and most importantly, get my gun ready, just in case. Both so that I can potentially bag a wolf and for my own protection. So we've got our MNP Sport 2 and we've got a little hollow sun. I have it on a 45 degree canid. We're going to get our tent set up. Tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a rooftop tent but with a Coleman old fashioned style tent. It will actually be useful to me to be on top of the vehicle just in case there are wolves to be able to spot them and or shoot them. Let's try it. The top of the Land Cruiser is not very flat. It has a roof rack bars on it. So I'm going to throw my little futon full-size mattress in there, see if it fits, and then try and hug it up there. She fits. Tents all set up up there. I'll show you that in a minute. I gotta get cooking dinner. Tonight we've got filet, mignon, got a nice Rioja to go with it. All right, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I need to get a fire started. So I've got some extra dug fur. I think some of this is actually dug fur. I'm not quite sure. You can see kind of some sap there, but we need to get a fire going so we can illuminate the area better than this light that I have here, just to make sure we're not gonna get snuck up on. We've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. We've got a lot of trails and a lot of points of entry, and I want to have all those illuminated just in case anything tries to sneak up on me. All right, so we got a nice little fire going. Should have dug out a pit, but it's working pretty well and I've got plenty to burn, so it'll end up just burning whatever snow's under there. So really just wanted it for the heat and the lighting. But we got potatoes going, gonna make some mashed potatoes, throw some butter, lemon, garlic powder, and some kinders in there, brought a little milk, make them creamy. This is a 2017 Lawn Rioja Reserva, which means it's aged a couple years before they release it. So it'll go pretty well with this steak. Let's see how it tastes.
Usually Rioja is gonna use some sort of New American Oak. Usually you get like dill, coconut, bourbon, that kind of stuff from New American Oak. Yeah, and kind of like stewed blueberry. It's kind of acidic, which is typical of old world wines from France, Spain, or Italy. Yeah, it's pretty good, medium bodied. For 20 bucks at the store, you can't beat it, and it'll go well with the steak. Well done, just how I like my steaks. Just kidding, I overcooked it a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Probably made a little too much, but that's cold. I think potatoes have potassium, which is good for when it's cold. All right, well, here's the view from our $20 rooftop tent. I don't have a sleeping bag, I just use my down comforter. Got the Jackery, couple bottles of propane. I may use this, I may not. It's not that cold, it's around 26 degrees, so it's not that bad. Same, just Coleman tent, just on top of the vehicle. Because you have to be on top of your vehicle to be cool, right? I guess the point of this video is save yourself the $2,000 on a rooftop tent and just throw a tent on top of your car if you want to sleep on top of your vehicle. A little buddy heater going, so it's going to be nice and toasty in here tonight. There's enough ventilation here for carbon monoxide, so so not really worried about that. All right, well, I'm about to catch some Z's. I'll see you all in the morning. Good morning. It's funny how whenever I go camping, even like last night, I got cold a little bit. I turned on my buddy heater from time to time, not the whole time, but I always sleep so much better than I ever sleep in a, my regular bed at home because there's no sound, just the sound of nature. And it's like what we as humans were meant to be in. Man, I love camping. The issue I had though is all of the condensation because of the propane heater. I'll most likely be making the switch to a diesel heater relatively soon, just so that I don't have condensation building up inside of the tent. Even though there's ventilation, I guess because of the way that propane burns, it causes condensation. So we're gonna have to get a diesel heater. Well, she did pretty well. Not bad for $20 rooftop tent. Sagging a little bit, we gotta fix that. Overall, really not that bad. So if you have a four person Coleman tent, you can be part of the rooftop tent gang. The poles actually hook pretty well into the rain gutters and kind of stabilize it. You don't need them because the weight of the mattress is going to secure itself on the roof, but that was actually pretty cool. All right, let's get this taken down. Takedown really wasn't that bad. It only took about 10 minutes. So I know some people that have rooftop tents that take longer than that. Not for the clamshell type, but more for the kind that you have to set up just like a normal tent. The purpose of this video wasn't to hate on people that have rooftop tents. It was more so that you don't need to have thousands of dollars of equipment. You could just have a good running truck that can get you where you need to go so that you can get out and experience this, which is what we all enjoy, is getting out in nature, getting away from everything, spending a night, recharging your batteries and returning to nature as human beings are supposed to. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed that. We're doing a cost breakdown on the new 1FZ rebuild that my dad has on his Land Cruiser for the next video. So until next time, I'll see you on the trails.